Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 228, take 17, for the week of uh, whatever month this is, September 22nd, 2015. My name is Ryan Higgins. Who is here with me this week? Brock Sager. Bryce. Well, Bryce, when I turn your mic down, you can actually talk normal, but not not normal. Bryce. Okay. <laughs> Who else is here this week? Toby. And Charlie. And we have a very special guest uh, with us from the great state of Canada. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Rene. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, you Je call- m'appelle Rene from Montreal. Yeah, that's right. Hey, what do you, Adam? Bien sûr, c'est vrai. Yeah, it's uh, like there's two of us now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bien what? Sûr. I'm still stuck on why you're calling it a state. It's a country. Because it was a joke. It's a joke, son. I know it's a joke. It's a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if Brock knew it was a joke. No, so. I knew it was a joke. So, uh, earlier today, Renee, you came into the store, and you were walking very around. Quietly. Very quietly. With a, with a very quiet dog, too. Beautiful dog. Um, and you were here, and I was like, oh, well, what, are you, what are you, for work, or you know, vacation? And, and you told me a story, and you told the rest of us a story. Tell us your story. Um, so I've been just traveling across uh, across the country, actually. I, I quit my job. I got into my 15-year-old car with my 14-year-old dog and uh, just uh, went from Montreal to Toronto to Detroit to Chicago, then across Route 66 all the way to uh, the Grand Canyon. From there, uh, Death Valley, uh, wow. Sequoia National f- uh, Park. You which went where through Death Valley was... during the heat wave? <laughs> Yes, but I was there uh, between. Uh, I got the. I got into Death Valley when the sun was setting, uh, and when the sun started coming up, I realized where I was. Your like, car how with how hot it was going to be. Yeah, your car and, with no air conditioning. That's right. Correct? It didn't have any air conditioning. I got it. Uh, I got the air conditioning fixed yesterday. Oh, <laughs> because uh, I've been living in Montreal. I've haven't needed air conditioning. <laughs> I've, I've worked at Death Valley once. Uh, yeah, I worked there right. once, and it was so hot that none of us stayed at the tell they were supposed to we uh lowered the grip truck gate and Mm -hmm. you know the metal gate we slept on that because it was cool just cool enough to like cool the atmosphere down for us so we just slept outside oh uh, well i also slept outside i slept in uh, i I was in the campgrounds nice so i yeah Yeah. it was uh this sounds so amazing and you've been been on this trip for like three weeks right Uh, i've I've lost a little bit track of time (laughs) i I left on september 1st so uh yeah yeah, Yeah. it's uh, we're the 21st today's the 22nd so it's tuesday we established that yes we established the we established the tuesday and i went wow. to see the uh, but, uh, that's cool ryan i yeah. quit i was gonna say that that's that's balls man i mean that's amazing so few people get a chance to do something like that or even would right i mean yeah. i mean that's that's awesome so i'm glad you've I, it sounds like you've had fun and and somehow this is part of your trip and i, I that's embarrassing to Just me like of the moment, i was like i'm in the san francisco area wait like i'll uh, you know, I've been listening to this podcast since the beginning. I'm gonna nice. swing by and oh, you're yeah. still with us. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Charlie is so charismatic. <laughs> he has come across the continent of North America to be a part of it. So you're right. moving to Vancouver, right? I mean, that's the end goal here. Uh, probably, yeah. We'll okay. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, when we'll, you get yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Vancouver is beautiful. Have you, have you never been there before? Never. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's my Van- one. Vancouver is really nice. It's my one international trip was Vancouver, and yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. Can you really so. say international when you don't even leave the the continent? Hell, well, it's a different yeah, nation. It's a different country. You <laughs> have to, you you have have to, to go your through customs. Right? Uh, you yeah. have to. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Not not real international. I'm not Bryce. I'm not flying all over the world. But uh, no, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so where to next? Through San Francisco up to Napa? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to avoid San Francisco because I did it, everything. So I've been here a couple of times, and it's pretty expensive. Uh, uh, the, and I'm, like I established a few moments ago, I'm unemployed currently. <laughs> I have no income. I won't be staying in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Yeah, that that sounds I like San Francisco. Accept your proclamation to be my butler, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll accept all. Okay, so uh, you'll, you'll deal like, with uh, immigration. Well, I'll take your puppy, and uh, <laughs> I accept all applications from you only to read all of that mo- uh, DC drivel and uh, report back to me in Cliff's Notes form. Why so would that be a butler's job? <laughs> it's a great because butler. Because it's, it's not suited well, for my be... behavior. Also, he'll call him Alfred instead of Renee. <laughs> no, we call him Jarvis. <laughs> there you go. Oh. So, maybe uh, Janae. Maybe Alfred. Yeah. No. Okay. Yep. So, um, <laughs> uh, 
in theory, if you listen to this podcast, you, you like comic books in some fashion, but you, you're like a new, you're kind of a new comic fan. I am. So, yeah. how, one, how did you start listening to this podcast? And two, how, like, what's your secret did it just, origin? Yeah, well, but yeah, what's your secret origin? If you've, okay. heard, this, you've, you've heard us do this. So, so my, my secret origin. Um, Bryce uh, is just shaking his head already. Yeah, exactly. No. Do so you know what's coming? No, I do know what's coming. Why don't you talk about briefly <laughs> how you got into comic books, yes. but then really what captured Skip your imagination w- without the New 52 part of it? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, it started initially, I think, that, well, the the person who's going to be most familiar with the books I was reading at first might be Toby, because uh, since I'm French-Canadian, like, a lot of the, the a lot of the very early comic books I was reading in school were, like, the Belgian, uh, the Belgian oh, things, excellent. like Lucky Luke and yeah. uh, uh, the Smurfs, etc. You uh, mentioned Lucky Luke first, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Extra credit to you. <laughs> yeah, Asterix and Obelix, yeah. uh, all of those, but except, you know, in French instead of uh, yeah. in German. Yeah, well, they're Central. originally French books. So. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You actually read them correctly, as opposed to me that read some butchered version of the problem. Yeah, so so those are, I guess, the first ones I, I started reading. Nice. Then, uh, you know, uh, uh, later on, the, the first American one was probably uh, The Death of Superman. Oh, my okay. God. He's a clone. <laughs> because, uh, Just from Canada. <laughs> Because uh, but I read uh, yeah I heard about it on the news like oh they're killing Superman yeah. and I I asked my mother to pick up the, the hard the to find trade. those in Canada well, I I just don't hang out in comic book stores yeah. so I don't know how f- but you you got the collection or you got like the I actual got a trade issue? I got a trade okay okay That's what so, I found yeah, so those are probably more readily available yeah. so yeah I mean if I found one in Switzerland yeah 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 that well, had a Canadian price tag below the U.S. <laughs> price tag. I think he could have found it. Oh, yeah. I think getting comic books in Canada is pretty easy because a lot of them are manufactured there. Well, it, and ha- they, for the longest time, they had the like Canada price on them. Oh, they still do. I mean, they they, they do. do. It's, it's, do, right? yeah. it's, do it's do? not impossible. It's not impossible. Uh, obviously, there's tons of comic on. shops in Canada, but learn new things every day. L- less so in the early '90s, yeah. and depending on where you are in the country, it's you know this could be you know major cities will have them, but a lot of smaller places. Mm-hmm. Won't. Charlie, the dog move. Don't kill it. <laughs> so I turned out not liking it because of all the editor notes saying like, "Oh, to find out more about this, go yeah. read this part and go read this issue oh, on so sales it's, it's on stands so good now." You didn't start with Marvel, and uh, that's uh, the so fuck I fuck you, bro. Whoa. <laughs> wow. So uh, you know, I I didn't read any more comic books afterwards, and okay. uh, then uh, uh, wait, wait. I, so I lost as a, you know, after the Superman. What did you read? Just other DC I, books? Or? No, just. Just stopped for stopped a while. Okay, comics. okay. Like that's that was my first and last. Experience so no, did you do the death comics. and a little, a couple more, the, or just a couple, a couple more? The resurrection okay. when they came back, like I no, had yeah, those, yeah, the, the four the, Superman, the, the four Superman, and when he was when he had the black suit, and okay. he, he yeah. got his his mullet and uh, the, yeah. Yeah. his mullet. Yeah. The so mullet. those are yeah. those are the, uh, the those are the issues I have. Did you make the blue Superman? No, oh, that was mm. a lot later. I, I heard about it, but I never. Uh, I no, never no, nobody knew those. And, That's uh, like as bad as John Romita Jr. Superman. Almost. Anyways, co- continue on. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, I started listening to the Geek Box at some point. <laughs> like it, almost from the beginning as well. I think cool. I think pretty much the beginning uh, when when Ryan lost his job, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's uh, when I started. Now, did you know Ryan from before his other podcast uh, or the One Up Show? Okay, so okay, I go okay. Back, all right. I go all the way back. Yeah. Wow. And uh, well, when uh, when this Ryan like. Uh, Decided to spin off into a new new podcast. Even though I didn't read comics, I kept listening to this podcast. Cool. Wow. And when I found out about the new Fifty Two, I went like, "Oh wait, they're rebooting everything. This sounds like the they're getting the rid of the, 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 <laughs> the thing that I disliked the most about which reading. is DC Comics. <laughs> now, now, bro. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, wait for it. Well, hold on. DC at least does a reboot, right? No. Oh. Oh, God, the worst ever. <laughs> So that's when I started reading as an adult uh, comic books. Cool. So uh, cool. it's uh, what are you what are you reading like right now? What, do you stick with a lot of the DC stuff? Or you kind of uh, go back and forth after Evil Forever Evil. Like I s- dropped most of them. Yeah. I've the pretty much the only two I've I'm still reading on the DC side is uh, Harley Quinn and Batman. Okay, both good titles. T- two of their better titles. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And, uh, but I've been reading a lot of. Uh, uh, when the secret uh, secret wars started, mm-hmm. I started reading all of those. Oh, cool. uh, most of those. Well, cool. What do you like in the now? And and I you know we know Bryce well, likes various <laughs> secret wars titles more than others. Secret what? 
in the last, I guess, four four weeks, I haven't read any of them because oh. I've been. Uh, hey, you've been on your trip. I've been on my yeah. trip. What are you I driving across the continent? <laughs> exactly. Hey, it's okay. They've been delayed, so you're all right. Yeah, you didn't miss your. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll they'll finish up when way before I'm I'm done with my trip. Way after. Uh But uh, I I like several of them. The ones I honestly I don't like that much are the the X Men uh, the X Men ones. Yeah. And Tell me about it. Fuck. There you go. So, but, uh, you, what are your knowledge of a lot of these characters? I mean, I'm very assuming, little. The you, movies. You probably watch the movies, movies and everything. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So, yeah. jumping into something like Secret Wars when you really haven't read many Marvel comics, I, I uh, Secret Wars Zero was incomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What are you talking uh, yeah. about? Secret Wars Zero was a, a fucking primer. It was. It was. It, was, it is literally issue zero. It, it brought you up to speed. Uh, it yeah, really you did. didn't need to know anything to know about Secret okay. Wars. You need to know all the okay. those characters, and yeah. I didn't know. What characters did you need to know? Give me okay. three. Bryce, give, me, give me two. Bryce, I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know the characters, so he is proving that you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> You're both fucking incompetent. <laughs> Dang, Bryce. <laughs> okay, okay. That's Don't take little... his insult seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I, I hope, hope he knows hold nothing. Hold hold I completely seriously. agree, or I completely believe that Renee has listened the whole time because he set you off in like one second. <laughs> <laughs> this bastard. Look, I know that he's trolling me. Uh, just to, like I know that well, fucking like I guess, 80% of the people listening are going to get angered about well, me. Well, no, no. I mean, well, I mean, this is actually a perfect example. I think something like Secret Wars, I think, is, is a great thing for people to jump on who maybe haven't read a lot of comics because Wait, Secret Wars is uh, well because a lot of these stories are in theory pretty self-contained. They reference old yeah, wait, stuff. Wait, what, do you right. disagree with that? Yeah, but it references all the classic stories. It references a lot of stuff, but yeah, but they all are all jump on. Yeah, but for different. someone that doesn't know any of them, that's really hard to comprehend. He jumped on the Secret Wars number zero. It, okay, it okay. Started from zero. How about you let him speak for <laughs> himself? <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> I will speak. Oh, I'm sorry, Renee. But I think starting on number two, guy, right, that was uh, it got a lot better. It made more it, sense. Yeah, yeah. It made a lot more sense. Wait, number yeah. two. Yeah. So what happened? I think it's the, the you I, went from zero to two. What happened to number one? What, well, I, one was the issue that should have been attached to like the anyway. Ultimate Renee, what, what happened with number one? I I also had trouble uh, with what? Uh, with one. I what think. the fuck? we talked about this when this came out. One was one was it, one should have been issue zero and two should have been issue one. Because your that's, troll comments, no, I, notwithstanding, were totally wrong at the time and they're no, wrong now. I'm down. A hundred percent. No, you were talking crap about number zero. I think we're out of two. The yeah. zero issue I zero, so. dude. Issue zero, you were you were wrong or at the time, and I was not three. on this podcast we're to defend one issue of them, zero. Issue zero was great. Issue zero is the free comic book day book. Yeah. Issue one was when everything was still kind of collapsing, and then issue two is when the when the new world is kind of forming. Uh, right. Issue zero was, zero was when it, it brought everybody up to speed with all of the Hickman stuff that you spent fucking like two years complaining about how you didn't but, understand. Right? But, but we don't have It took you two. like an hour and a half to explain <laughs> yeah. the Hickman ro- what yeah. Okay. It took an hour and a half to explain how awesome it was uh, with all of its intricacies. <laughs> anyway. It does not take anybody an hour and a half to explain how awesome. Anyway, where I'm going with this, and Bryce, you will appreciate it, is that Marvel and DC, despite all their attempts, have some issues in making books... Openly available to new readers. There's only 50 characters introduced. <laughs> yeah, 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 How is that complicated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. I, I don't even think you got that in the zero issue. You know, with the new 52, uh, I, think I there was found something similar, but still, yeah, yeah still no, it doesn't small. help. With the new 52, I found if you knew the basics of a lot of the characters, you were thrown in. But I actually think if you didn't know, or if you knew a lot of the stories, I think the new 52 gets a little confusing because it's so. Things are you. You can't assume anything on the new Fifty Two. Bryce is making these weird ass faces based off the art and the, the issue. With Secret Dude, Wars, not, can we establish? I I'm sure that what you're saying is great. But can we establish that the side ripic is incredible? He's a good side ripic is great. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. With Secret okay. Wars, I think uh, it's hard because it was kind of the same thing with the new Fifty Two. For established fans, they're so different, but they're elements that you remember. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel it's like uh, y- 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 it, it's a little hard for 
for people that are new readers because you don't know what's going on. Yep. And for old readers who are like, well, this isn't what I know. And, and in very similar fashion, we'll talk about Gotham a little later in this episode, the mm-hmm. premiere of season two. So, uh, well, I mean, uh, I remember something like that when I when I got back into comic books, which which was with uh, Final Crisis and Legion of Three Worlds. Oh, I'm like an like, impenetrable comic if like, you haven't read them before. I I attempted to read it and I I got through it, but I was just like kind of hey, about Bryce, the whole thing. So stop beating on my comic book that's for sale. Put that down. <laughs> You're Thank not going to you. sell this. <laughs> but two two was actually when uh, it didn't completely feel like a Hickman book. It felt two, like Aaron two is when was it, ghost writing it. Flipped. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Oh, it makes me so angry when you guys say this shit that is based on nothing. Like that is a just hit- put it in the back of the stack. It's fine. <laughs> that that is a Hickman. Oh, I, book probably, that, I probably should have done that. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> that is a Hickman book that you guys were just trolling on at the time, and you're trolling on now. Like just because it feels like an Aaron book doesn't mean it was an Aaron book that you would incredible or uh, 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 entirely deride. Did the voice any- change from one, zero one to two? Did the voice in the book change? The whole thing has been written in its entirety Again, by Jonathan Renee. Hickman. Oh, it, it felt very different, this uh, number Thank two. I, I didn't see the, who the credits were, who the yeah. writers were, but it felt very different. Uh, and I agree. For those of you at home, <laughs> Renee just wants to make Higgins. So, <laughs> hey. so hey. he'll say whatever the fuck. Hey, some people are at work. They actually have jobs. Don't we we're here for work. hours beforehand plotting all this. No, no, no. So with all the new de- uh, with the new Marvel books that are all yeah, coming up starting in October. Yeah, me neither. The um, is that a joke? With all the new Marvel books starting in October, uh, are you going to continue with any of these, or are you going to try out a uh, few? Because these are again the new books will be in theory the the yeah, actual the, new 52 the actual books. characters. So I'm I'm not sure. I've I've read a couple of the. Uh, uh, I read some Thor before it and before mm. uh, Secret Wars. Very good. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading Thor. I definitely uh, I would... recommend Doctor Strange too because okay. it's Jason Aaron. He's doing really. His... Oh yeah, very <laughs> excited for that. Wait. I mean, fucking, I I can't wait for Doctor Strange. But you, uh, you would recommend Doctor Strange? I, I would you, recommend it too. Have you, you listened hate to Chris Pacello? But. Chris Pacello is a difficult artist sometimes, <laughs> yeah, but a book fucking... like Doctor Strange is the perfect, perfect. book for him. 100%. X-Men? Uncanny X-Men? No. Doctor Strange? Yes. 100%. And, and Jason Aaron's Thor has been the, I disagree. one of the what best books he's published. What world am I living in? I think he's excellent for either book. Same thing. I'm not a big Pacello fan, but I think... That oh. So let me get this straight. Dr. Both Strange. of you, this is shocking that you both agree with each other. He said fucking sarcastically. <laughs> um... <laughs> You guys both hate Pacello, but you think Doctor. You both happen to think that Doctor <laughs> Strange hate, would be for a, I don't a hate perfect Pacello. book for him to. Yeah, I, I don't hate it. It's I, his his art works only for. You guys have for me. only ever publicly derided Chris Pacello's artwork, and now you both happen to be. <sighs> that doesn't mean I hate it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. To to. to, to to make this just stop. Um, <laughs> hit end on the podcast I have, recording. I have, as I've said many, many times in the past, Chris Pachala was at one point careful one of careful. my favorite artists. When he was working on Death, when he was working on Shade the Changing Man, all the early, late eighties, early nineties stuff mm-hmm. at DC, I loved him. Okay, now we change topic. All right, when he good. when he moved to Generation X, I was like, wow, this is a, a little different of a style, but it. I still really liked it. As time went on, I think it was when Steampunk came out, it, his art really kind of... It, it's very good, but I think it only works on certain titles. A book like Steampunk, it works perfectly fine on because that's the style that he's going with. Uncanny X-Men, Amazing Spider-Man, yeah, his, it, do, it, it doesn't his, work for It was for Amazing me. Spider-Man work that kind of turned me off. Doctor Strange, bit. that is a perfect perfect book for him for the listeners i'm totally shaking my head at right now. that's fine you don't have to i mean i mean i'm just saying this is what i think to, totally about chris pachala or not so i own two uh, a two-page spread from chris pachala that i framed and put on the wall i and it's i know so freaking amazing yeah i agree what? he's a good really point, good artist charlie well, some no, books <laughs> Okay, so like, do you want to fucking elaborate? Well, so so, that's your argument. My argument is this: there is a reality to the fact that some artists are phenomenally great when you give them the right source material. Like, they can be good artists, but their art can be taken to a new level when they have source material that suits their art style. So, 
uh, an so, artist. So saying I love this artist and I have a two page spread, nobody's saying he's a bad artist. They're just saying they don't like his style on these particular books. One of the artists we talk about here all the time that I, you I'm know, sorry, I'm not Charlie a fan Dunn. of. Please go ahead, Ryan. Uh, I will. <laughs> you fucking totally interrupted him, dude. He was in the middle of his fucking. Well, I, I, because I am adding to his point you're, before. You're, can you add after he's done? I, I, so I'm done, Ryan. Thank go ahead. You. Thank he you. Wasn't fucking done. John Romita Jr., oh. who I do not like. However, his pages that I do not have on the wall. Frank. His run on his run on Thor was awesome. What? That is a book that he is suited for. When he he's on Spider Man or Superman, it does not work. But a character like Thor, his run of Thor in the late like it was a, that was like the Heroes Reborn stuff, like mm-hmm. shortly after that, like a couple a couple arcs into it, he did a lot. He did a good couple of years on Heroes Reborn. That stuff is really good, and that stuff fits his style. His art works really well on that title. I bought a lot of books at that time. Yeah. I don't remember Thor existing. Yeah, Thor at number time. one yeah. was all uh, was John Romita Jr. Yeah, and Dan Jurgens. Dude, I that was a good run. I want. Whatever drugs you're taking, go and look John at them. Romita Jr. was ever good. Go look at those issues. The good issues. one was Straczynski afterwards. Oh, that was right, good, like, that was good too. Like and that was all. After. And that was, was all of every, right? Was it the square tipped fingers that won you over? Or was I'm just it saying, I think the like art. I, I normally don't the, like his art, but on that title, I thought he did a really good job because I think the source material fit him. The style of the character of Thor and the things he mm-hmm. fights. Fits his art style. I'll pull the issues out right now. If I don't, you want to, if I don't you want like to, to hate on anybody, but uh, man, his art—I was just never a fan of. Yeah, I yeah, can't wait, wait. So, just so I'm hearing this correctly, since we've like you've half hijacked this comment, <laughs> you're defending John Romita Jr.'s art on a certain book. That's like Gage thinking that Man of Steel was better than Avengers. <laughs> it was. Oh. You let him slide that comment in? Well, well, we, You're this slipping. Is, this has changed directory. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> We're not going to have a redo of my wedding, okay? <laughs> By the way, uh, um, I didn't get to talk about it. I went to Ryan's wedding. It was actually legitimately incredible. I've told my friends that are outside of our circle stories about it. The whole Leanne, uh, so Ryan's wife. Crazy. Yeah, my wife. Um, <laughs> Dude, it's no longer after this podcast. No, that's like your second. That's like your second favorite movie, so it's fine. I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm riding that this podcast. No longer. I'm, I'm riding that comedy button wave. So but seriously, podcast, dude, podcast. or dudes, and I guess dudes. I guess in case there's dudes listening. Um, so Leanne, in her wedding vows, talks about how she's going to keep their wedding in near mint condition. It fucking broke my heart. I fucking started crying. My wife was crying. Well, that's also because he had like two X Men references. <laughs> The speech too that may or may not have been also I, true. So but. Bryce, you, you you know when when he uh, when the officiant sent me the list of stuff over, he had quotes from various sort of things. I saw the X Men Thirty reference and went, "Well, I have to keep that in for Bryce. <laughs> I have to." My man, because if there's one person there that'll be like, <gasps> <laughs> my man. No, I I was already uh, shedding a, a a gentlemanly tear uh, <sighs> when she when Leanne said uh, about keeping your relationship in near mint condition. Yeah. That is like for those of you out there that have been married, you can relate. If you're about to be married or will at some point be married, you can also probably relate. When your fucking uh, to be says that she'll keep it your relationship in near mint condition, that is something that you don't. <laughs> get every day that is something that you don't get every lifetime and you should cherish that this podcast got, got real creepy <laughs> anyway fuck man of steel <laughs> <laughs> well okay um so but 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 where was i uh, four minutes ago you Three were surprised ago. you were surprised that i can dance i remember that oh so i show up to the dance floor and higgins is dancing like Competently, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm not like, I'm not like slow. So, I'm not like no, no, wedding no. dance. He, he I'm was, like, he was, he was not awkwardly white boy dancing, and I should know. <laughs> I mean, Brock was standing on the side. Charlie was like probably doing something gentlemanly and 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 nice, like Charlie's always doing. Toby was like uh, MIA totally. Although, if anybody, I would say that Toby was the second best dancer. But Higgins, you guys should have seen Higgins. Higgins was <laughs> dancing like like crazy. He was like, but not in a bad way. He was like competently and like with moves dancing. I was like, what the. Fuck? Okay. What? Where did this come from? But it was actually really good. Okay. Why don't, don't we just? Me. Charles why don't, has to say. why don't we just tell people that you covered this in a lot more detail in the Bryce briefly <laughs> recorded before the podcast? Good point. I'll leave that to Higgins. I, what was I talking about other than the wedding? Okay. I have to say though, my favorite picture from the wedding. 
is no Leanne and Ryan pictures. It's <laughs> actually a picture of you oh, and a Higgins man dancing yeah. to jump around. <laughs> Have you oh. seen that picture yet? Oh, I... It's a glorious picture. Can I not post that? I'll post that tonight. It's like the black. I, I'll one. post it right now. Oh, did you see the black and white one though? Right? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's so glorious! It's so glorious. Whoever okay. took that picture was did really well. <laughs> Were we going to talk some comic book stuff? He and yeah. I are literally both in mid air, yeah. dancing to House Smiling of Pain, smiling and framed by people. Okay, I can't. I'm going to post it mid podcast. What was I talking about before? I already forgot. Main condition relationships. No, that was incredible, but that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> Jean Grey <laughs> no, he's terrible. What Jean Grey and Scott about? Summers wedding. Jean Grey and Scott Summers wedding. You should all be so lucky to have that in your wedding at Higgins did. <laughs> what was I talking about before that? Before <laughs> how about we cover a couple news stories. Yay! Please. News stories. And then we'll cover a couple questions. I'm still not sure that this thing is fucking recording. You're <laughs> that we have to go back and start over again. We, <laughs> we've had some technical problems uh, on the Geekbox this week in this episode, but I... This episode? We're, we're, it started last week. Well, it started last week. We're, our, some of our mics are old. Our cords are old. We, we Toby had to run and grab some extra... Nobody listens to Roddy Brock. I, I think I think next week we'll, uh, we're going to have a bunch of new I sound mean, so. It sounds super good this this episode. It's because I got some fancy, really old mic yeah. right now. That looks like it came out of like steampunk or something. Yes. <laughs> so it Ryan like should a, use it. It looks next like week. a spider on top of a <laughs> uh, actual recording. Yeah. Mic. It looks like a Dalek spider on top of a uh, like a stand it, or something. It does have like a that. Dalek feel to it. Well, let's let's hit up it a couple looks like questions. The thing that drops to ignite the bomb. Exterminate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's let's hit up a couple. Oh, if you want to hear all about this week's. Uh, Great new episode of Doctor Who. Listen to Charlie's uh, podcast. It's better. But, uh, Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension. Oh, a little teaser uh, from Tobias. Well, he asked oh, me too Charlie, late. Don't you do well, that. I invited you, you to come give your opinion. Now your opinion doesn't matter. No! Like, <laughs> you asked me too late. I was already in the movie theater. See, you know it's gonna be, you know it's going to be good when Charlie leans in and goes. <sighs> just takes that breath. So, Renee, I apologize to you because you've had, like, two and a half full non-episodes of the podcast. People listening to this podcast are like, what the hell is wrong with this episode? <laughs> I, I think we're just... I'm sorry. We're in a mood tonight or I something. I brought the metric so. system. If no, only- <laughs> he made us happy. <laughs> if only Renee would stop talking, we could get a word in. <laughs> Jesus, Renee. God. Well, to, to, to finish, to go back 20 minutes and finish your secret origin... Uh, I, I thank you. <laughs> That's what you were thinking of, wasn't it, Brett? Uh, I, 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 you, Renee, and your new 52. Was that where I started? Yes, that, yes. yes. I'm sorry, Renee. I'm sorry. I actually uh, really like Renee. Renee's a gentleman. He's actually a gentleman. Uh, I'm What's happy to hear that that this podcast has caused you to to read comic books and get in the stuff. So, and, and that's great. And I, and I, I hope apologize w- for the ding to your wallet. So. I, I, ho- I hope once you're uh, settled up in um up in a he doesn't uh, have a job. Yeah, well, no, before. Oh. Yeah, before. Oh, before. Yeah. We're, we're just settled up in well, Vancouver. I, 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 I found out there was a Batman sale today, and I started oh. seeing if there was uh, any comics that I were missing to my collection. So. Oh, yeah, big... Um, Wait, do you read digitally, then, or do you... Yeah, just digital. You just digital? Oh, yeah. that's interesting, too, actually. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because be- otherwise, like, I wouldn't be able to have fit everything in my car. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. He yeah. brought his whole collection with him on this trip. That's exactly. Wow. And it, it weighed wow. nothing. Yeah, big uh, sale. Uh, it's Batman week. So you call is, that a big sale? I, it's bigger than big. It's, it's huge. It's the vast majority of the Batman and comics. Charlie would know. Let's yeah. be real. Right. Charlie is a fucking... Well, it's like a thousand issues or something. Yeah. It's it's not a small sale at all. Yeah, so the dog must feel really safe with like you. Tall, on, I was going for. on Comixology, but. which you can find our digital site at digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, it's the Batman Day sale because Batman Day is a Saturday. Uh, it's going to be a new annual thing they're doing from DC, yeah. and uh, so is they're it having official Batman Day, yeah, yeah. like announced by the they, mayor and everything. Well, they did it last year as like a one-off, and they did, they did this year as kind of like a second test. Is and that when Batkid came alive? No. Okay, that was something different. Right. Um, but they're going to continue this Batman Day thing every year. Uh, Can we so, have a Superman in, I think it's Day? September. Maybe, probably at some point. Uh, so there's a huge sale. Day? Uh, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz so make sure you go on there and check that out uh, ends I th- probably Monday or Tuesday next week so. and if I recall it's Night not just Ooh, Batman I it's like the Bat family Bat family yeah, Batman right, and right, Outsiders right, right, is on right, sale right. and I'm tempted alright well like I was saying so that, that's awesome that uh, 
that not only you, you listened to this podcast and got in the comic books, but now you've come all this way here to, yeah. to, to talk to us and beyond. So, and I, I, I want to hear, are you on Twitter? Are you on Facebook no. or anything like that? No. Do you do any of that stuff? He's Shoot, on the road. Do you man. have email? Do you use email? Do I you, do use email. Okay. Email me when you reach Vancouver. I want to hear okay. how the rest of your trip went. Very I'm, well. yeah, I'm very curious. So, so now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to back it up. You actually packed everything in your car. So you're just uh, in your car right now. You, you, do you actually still have a home back? No, I don't have a home. But I. I uh, so you, this is it. This, everything's yeah, in but your, not, Wow. Not every everything. Okay. Like I. I uh, gave my mom some stuff to store. Okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and right. there's it's about twenty. <laughs> Box, uh, banker that's, boxes yeah, of things, normal, yeah. and uh, which you know it's a, just two little stacks you can of kilograms. Yeah. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, the rest is yeah, the rest wow. is in my car. Wow, that's kind of cool. Toby wants to do this. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it will never work. Uh, Charlie, I'll fill your entire house out. You have to get a you have to get a, <laughs> one of those uh, sixteen wheeler trailers and just take it across the country <laughs> with all your toys. Charlie, I'm filling an entire place. You know, up. if he got I'm a sixteen wheeler, he would put Kit in it. <laughs> Ooh. Kid. <laughs> I would give up my collection for Kit. If it's real and it can press a button and start talking to me, you'll never hear from me again. So a couple of news stories this week. We'll, we'll do a few quick things. Uh, I, I do actually want to talk real quickly about Gotham 2 because they had the uh, premiere season 2 here. Um, one of the big new announcements from Marvel is the new Black Panther series. Uh, rumored for a little while. I'm going to butcher this guy's name because I can't speak. That's what uh, you do. Tanahishi Coates. Um who is uh, a writer for The Atlantic and uh, written uh, novels as well. Um, he uh, is good. This is his first comic book ever writing, ever written, but he's a, he's a big-time comic book fan, and Marvel has definitely tried to um, diversify their creative staff. What does that mean? Uh, they're trying to hire <laughs> uh, people of various <laughs> races, so uh, genders, and sexual orientations. Uh, which is which a good idea. So, uh, uh, new Black Panther series, especially with the movie coming up, there's obviously going to be a lot of pressure on this. Um, Can know, I say that Priest wrote some really good books? He wrote the best. Oh, man, he was... I miss They're him releasing quite a bit. that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, they're releasing all the Christopher Priest stuff in oh, trade really? paperback. Yeah, the first volume's out. I got more comments. Oh, Second dude, volume's out in a couple months. His stuff was amazing. I, I, can, I really miss him in comic books. I really Yeah, know. I cannot recommend I mean, that run stuff, higher. right, for Black Panther? Yeah, that's yeah, the problem. I mean, Right. All the stuff that came after was really bad. And before. And kind of before. Yeah. Like, Black Panther's a character, he's a great character that's had just not the best track record, track record of having comics. So I uh, highly recommend, uh, recommend the Christopher Priest stuff. And hopefully this new one is good. So, uh, very excited. Cool. Hopefully that comes up. Um, I know, Toby, uh, you had, you actually got to, there were a few things in here because... Um, really? Really? Well, that's you, rare. I've had this has been a bad day for me. Not only is the podcast schedule all it's messed up, it's been a horrible day up. for me too. Well, not it hasn't been bad in a bad way. It's oh. just been like uh, books were delayed, so everything's all off today. And we're gonna um, start over in about five minutes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have to run and get more cables. Yeah, yeah. So lots of more cables issues. is always awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, but Toby, I, I know we are missing it right now. Yes, but, uh, we're missing what? Uh, I know you wanted to talk oh. about. Oh, your, the Muppets! Your favorite thing ever. The Muppets! The Muppets, the Muppets, the Muppets, the Muppets. We have a new Muppet show on. Yes. Yeah, this isn't really comics, but uh, it's this definitely... the best thing it's, ever! It's definitely nerdy enough, so we'll talk about it here for a bit. Excellent! I'm very excited for this new Muppet show. I am too! Yeah. yeah it looks really good. It, it looks, looks fantastic! Yeah, it looks really good. I feel like that's what it should have done... When they did Muppets Tonight. My problem is we're going to post this episode in about two hours or three hours and or so. And I'm tonight as in Muppets Tonight, the Muppets Tonight show. Y- yes, All yes, right. yes. <laughs> but I mean, when I post this episode, we'll have... Pre- uh, I'm assuming myself and Toby and probably Charlie will have already watched the Muppets and we're going to be like, damn, that sucked. No, and we have to go no, back it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I hope it is. I really it's, hope it is. It's going to be awesome. For those of us that don't give a fuck. What? Can you... Can you- Outside with okay. you. As in you want to fight me? Yeah! So <laughs> I'll rethink Price. that once I'm outside. I'm just having fun going, and this is basically the night for it. I mean, we're all kind of... I could possibly take Charlie. I could definitely take you. <laughs> so, Bryce, um, while I've never been the biggest fan of the I'm Muppets, not, I'm, I, I'm I, trying to be direct. But, but like now that you've accepted understand. Disney well, as I know, your I've, one I, I watched master... The Muppet, I watched no, the Muppet I, Show when I was a kid. I love Muppet Babies, but I didn't I, really stick with it. Right. Um, I just want to. I'm not trying to be derisive. I just want to understand. Yeah. Yes. 
Because I don't give, I, I don't understand it. So what they're well, doing? Well, well, first of all, can you back up what, what what is going on? They just restarted the Muppets. What yeah. happened? So there's well, a new Muppet not show. Restarting it, and continuing it. It's on it. Explain it. Okay, I yeah. will. It's on a prime time. Yes. Um, it is. Toby may have more uh, specifics on on the show, but it is set up much like uh, think like The Office or Thirty Rock. Which I am not the biggest fan of those shows. Me neither. But but Dude, if it's the Muppets, I'm in. You know, it's great so it's Parks and Rec. so it's a mockumentary style show about the life of them while they're not on their show. Well, the, they're, they're just incredible. they're still they're still they're, doing their show. They're, they're, they're doing, doing their their show yeah. as well as well, their it's, life. It's actually no longer their show. It's Miss Piggy's uh, late night show, right? That they're producing. So it's very much like Muppets Tonight, but in up, an updated yeah. way. Yeah, and it is. Fozzie is dating a human, and the human's parents are really worried that uh, <coughs> their daughter is d- dating a teddy bear or a Muppet bear. Uh, Sounds hilarious. Uh, yeah, uh, the prawn and Gonzo are writers of the show. Uh, and, not very good at it. And, uh, and while it is, and while they have said this is definitely, you know, kids can watch this. It is, it is like all the classic Muppet stuff. Definitely a lot of adult. In nature mm-hmm. jokes. Not, Piggy not, and Kermit are no longer together. Yeah, they, they're separated. And he's dating a Kurt, younger No, I, he's, he's looking. I don't know if they're actually dating, well, but there's like the assistant. Yeah. There's another Piggy in the mist, and she oh, looks snap. just like the Game of Thrones character, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Which, the Game of Thrones character? That, oh, yeah, that, that, that one. Which, uh, what, that, which one are you talking about? Which one is it? Yeah, it's the, it's the one that takes the... the it's it's John the one, Joffrey's uh, uh, new wife. Uh, the new wife, the second wife. Oh, yeah. the fucking girl from the Tudors, that that smile I can't stand. Yeah, yeah that's that's the Marjorie? new Miss Piggy. Yeah, Marjorie, yeah. 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 Fucking Marjorie what Tyrell, name is that it? saucy minx with that smile I can't stand. Well, now you can see her as a Piggy in The Muppets. Ah, oh, that'll just annoy me. <laughs> oh. Like the cameos are, are they have lined up are hilarious. I can't wait to can't. hear about it. Oh, <sighs> well, I'll force. I'll come to your house and just sit down well, on dude, the couch. A, Kelly, be like, why is Toby here? Well, Toby's a, making me watch the Muppets. I don't know why. Should probably be like, thank God, because Bryce is playing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. I, there's just so much good TV to watch. You guys can't convince me that the Muppets is the best thing to prioritize with so little time. No, I'm just, I'm just excited for it. I think it's, I mean, it looks uh, funny. But if you have the time, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like, I prioritize know, over a lot so, of shows. Some people have fucking more time than others because sure, sure. Uh, other people are, you know, producing human life for better, for worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, after this last weekend, I would definitely say for worse. Mm. Charlie might say for better, but... God damn, these kids are exhausting and such a pain in the ass. And- <laughs> yep. Yep, there, there is that. God, I love you That guys. aspect of fatherhood. <laughs> you listen to this in the future, I love you so much. Actually, when I have a bad day, I actually go to Charlie's because mm-hmm. their kids actually take a good uh, finger off my shoulder and I play video games with, it, with them and Probably life becomes very simple. Like, oh, my life yeah, is no, so it's very nice. It's Poor very Charlie therapeutic. Has, uh, yeah, no, Charlie is good. like, oh, Toby's your kids. Come here, Toby needs a, needs a good day. <laughs> yeah. Make his life better. Dude, I'm telling you, for all those of you guys that uh, that have kids like in your future, it's the best thing ever. But fuck, is it just not the most exhausting thing ever? Ugh, it's amazing. There you go. Parental advice. So, uh, did anyone get to see the Gotham premiere? Not yet. Nope. Oh, oh, we're not done with the Muppets. Oh. Yeah, okay. one of the showrunners comes full circle. He started with the Muppets, and he is back on the Muppets, and he's also the showrunner of one of your most hated shows ever, which you were in the t-shirt of right now. Oh, God. <laughs> well, Big Bang Theory? Yeah. Great. Chuck. Is it Chuck? Bill Prady? Oh, Bill. Yeah. I probably butchered the name and didn't say it right because I didn't memorize it. It's Chuck Lowe. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Well, okay, so on to Gotham. Gotham. <laughs> so I, I do want to talk Muppets about this for a little bit. Does anyone Gotham. care about potential Spoiler. spoilers for Gotham? No, but this is not a spoiler. Hmm. This is a Ryan Fury. That should be a whole new segment. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. How long? What's our <laughs> so running theory? total yeah. at the moment for the of, podcast? Of what? Time? Yeah. 40 minutes. It's time for Patreon. Oh, I actually closed the the Wait, Facebook. Oh, you window. fucker! <laughs> we, I gotta get I gotta whoa. get it back open. Oh, oh, whoa! We did a Facebook thread on that, didn't <laughs> well, we? Let, let me. Charlie yeah, yeah. Swearing yeah. last time. So, yeah. Funny, funny, funny this note time about you that. Just used it vitriolically. So, oh, in geez, one of my please. early cuts of the Higgins versus Larson trailer, I actually had. A oh, spot. by the way, pause. What? If any of you haven't seen tra- Toby's trailer. Fucking go see Toby's trailer by hook or by crook. It is a, 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 it is so well done, despite me being right about Man of Steel. No, to- you're wrong. Toby's production value is seriously really good. 
So even for that, even if you agree with Higgins, which you're wrong about, you should go see it because Toby did such a fucking incredible job. Anyway, I'm sorry. So, I'm Renee, you, you know no. Man of Steel? Have you seen Man of Steel? I have. What do you think of that movie? Uh, I like it. For it. Okay. Ah! okay. Wait. Oh, he's Canadian. <laughs> Wait. Hey. Let the guy finish. Oh. Oh, just the end. Uh, yeah. Thanks, okay. Brock. <laughs> good tip if, good tip on waiting for him to finish yeah that was, said uh, the end of the, yeah. that was useful no the, the, they should have stopped when everyone the credit, they, the they, credits they, they thought everyone was in the phantom zone and he kisses Lois and that's where it should have stopped so, so no Instead, Zod yeah, the, the, the final fight with Zod was useless you, yeah. okay. the final, it, it, felt, it felt like all the writers wrote themselves into a corner and what the they had fuck to... why did you start with that yes I totally agree with that <laughs> what? What? what he liked no, the rest I of the movie I, I, told I, you to wait. I really That's liked why. the everything before that well, I really like that, it I, I'm, your I'm actually <laughs> I'm pretty excited about the um, Superman versus uh, Batman yeah! thing finally I'm real sorry human. the Batman movie yes no. the Batman yeah. movie that's turning into yes the Superman movie that's turning into a, a Batman movie. it seriously is a Superman movie that is turning into Batman yeah it's that's Oh, well, Jordan Affleck Affleck has played Superman, it. so it's only right that he uh, takes over as the Batman in that movie. Well, thanks to that, I do have all these Patreon no, no, people. Hold on, I, I, I didn't get to finish my thing. So, in an early cut of Muppets? that trailer, oh. no, in an early cut of that trailer, I had a brief segment of Charlie swearing about people about you know not like the movie. It's like. Ah, shit, what did he say? He said something really good. And then in a lot of the early cuts, I actually had the full trailer, and then it ends, and then it was like a little tiny Charlie segment at the very end. <laughs> Should have left that in. Ah, I was so tempted, I was so tempted. Well, from Patreon, we have to thank our good and, friends. And, and for your information, I so did not want to give you the last word on that trailer. I, I so did not want to I do know. that, but it worked so much better, I so know. I had to do You've it. You've mentioned that multiple times to yeah, me off the air. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me on yeah. the air. Yeah. Well, I played fair. We have to thank Albert Soy uh, and his app, Plant Everywhere. Don't forget to check that out on iTunes. Uh, Jody Lawson in the Canon Triad Comics Anthology at triadcomicsstudios.com. Go read those comics. It's good stuff. And the Julian Titus at the Nerds of the Pants podcast. Uh, pixelbit.com, P I X. Oh, no pants! B I T dot com. <laughs> no pants! <laughs> no pants! <laughs> Charlie, give me that look. I'm like, damn, it's something. What did I do? Charlie. Well, we had feedback at the wedding that one of their favorite parts of the show was Toby's no pants <laughs> comments. There you go. <laughs> well, let, let me let me talk about like, this. Should be a whole show. Toby's no pants segment. Can you guys all all the listeners go out and look at Age of Apocalypse issue number four with Emma Frost backbreaking pose oh, and geez. just appreciate it because it looks a little awkward in terms of art, but. <laughs> Let's 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 uh, go back. Humanly possible. Let's, let's oh, it all, is not only humanly possible. Because I've seen you do it, so I know it's possible. Oh, I, and I'll do it all day if she will. And let's in all, that outfit and yeah. everything. Uh, let, let, well, let's all focus. Half true. Let's all focus. Focus. Let's all focus. focus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Age of Apocalypse issue four. Emma Frost. Okay. <laughs> Renee, what did you do to us, man? <laughs> Wunderbar. Like, yes, I'm terribly sorry. As they say in Canada, Wunderbar. <laughs> hey, no, that's uh, that's where a I'm mixture from. of uh, <laughs> continents. Uh, okay. Let, let's, let's focus Thank back you. around. Thank you both for doing that wrong. Jeez. Bryce. Bryce. Yeah, yeah. What? What? Emma Frost is <laughs> back. Shiny Shoot lights. Shiny Bryce. lights. Okay. Soothing music. Gotham. 45 minutes are up, actually. Gotham. By the way, yeah. more people care about Emma Frost than issue four of Age of Apocalypse <laughs> than Gotham. Just, you know. That's actually Possibly true. the ratings for uh, the... Uh, I still care about Patreon people. Well, I, Emma, I, I thank all our Patreon Alone people. Emma is already better than Gotham. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, yeah. Gotham... Season two premiere was this past uh, past night, actually last night. And while I didn't love season one, uh, there's good and bad to it. But I've I've finally broken down and learned to just it, it put this in the the deep end of the Elseworld worlds and just accept that they're just going off the fucking reservation and doing whatever the hell they want on this show. And so that made this first episode of season two kind of kind of interesting. Now, you guys don't care about very lightish no spoilers, it. okay? So a lot of Penguin, a lot of Gordon, obviously a little bit of a little bit of Catwoman, uh, a little bit of Bruce. There's some interesting stuff with there, but potentially the coolest part of the show, and then they're they're definitely playing this up in like a weird like Schumacher Batman sixty six type of style to a little bit. You got the Dutch camera angles and everything like that, but. So they they're doing stuff in Arkham, 
with not only Jerome, the the redhead kid yeah, that they're the one the one that they were teasing as Joker, but said no, he's not. They're kind of setting up as like a maybe. The, who knows what they're doing with him? That he's a Joker. Um, and Barbara, Barbara Kane, so or Barbara Keen, sorry, uh, uh, Gordon's uh, ex, right? Um, Psycho ex girlfriend who went totally crazy insane and tried to kill uh, Leslie Tompkins in the last season and everything like that. Um, who who gets stuck in Gotham or sorry gets 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 uh, stuck in Arkham? They're they're setting up a very interesting dynamic between those two characters, and it's a little hard to read after just one episode. But when I initially looked at it, I'm like, okay, he's supposed to be the Joker. They're setting her up to be Harley Quinn. I was like, that's weird i didn't see that coming but okay she's kind of i could see them kind of maybe putting her as like kind of this harley quinn position but the more i thought about it and i read a couple comments today that that people had the same thought when you actually re- when you actually watch this episode they're kind of setting her up as the joker as the dominant character in that relationship as the as the you know kind of the alpha character and they're almost setting Jerome up like harley quinn like this sort of sidekick, kind of in love with, in love with her, but she doesn't care about him very much the same way she's in love with the Joker, but but he doesn't care about her. So it's like it's Joker Harley Quinn, but they're flipping them, and that's potentially really cool if they pull it off right. And I, I don't think anyone saw this coming. So I, it's a weird show, and I still have some weird issues with it. But this episode was. I, I think it's I think it's kind of turning turning its course a little bit. So I, I really want to see what they do with it, and I want to know what you guys think about it when you watch it because I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna probably try and watch it this week. Yeah, I probably would have watched it tonight if we had ended like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> well, we're we're gonna we're gonna end pretty soon here. So, but that's all I want to say about Gotham. <laughs> That's, sorry, that, we can't all be screaming about. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Sorry, Gotham? we that can't was, all be screaming about. That uh, was scintillating. Scintillating. And, that was really and, exciting. Emma Frost's butt. Um, what were we talking about? Gotham. Emma Frost's butt. Uh, really? Yeah, you missed I probably it. would have fallen yeah. asleep. Tell me about Fear of the Walking Dead. I heard that was really good. So I have. I've, I'm like. I was on vacation last week. I haven't watched. Oh, the well, last that was a good ten minute diatribe you gave about Gotham. That's what. I, it's uh, a season premiere, so I want to talk about it. Mm. We're gonna answer. Fear the Walking Dead's been good. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie, for actually giving me a real answer. We're going to answer a couple questions here now. So let's um, let's do that now. Uh, this is from Talio on Twitter. He says, how would you punish asshole scalpers? Fuck those guys. I should have to pay $1,000 for a trade paperback. I agree you should have to pay $1,000 for a trade paperback. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. I'll, trades go, various trades go out of print, go for mm-hmm. tons of money for no reason. Here's it's, the it's solution. Um, person concerned about asshole scalpers. The problem is you can't uh, do anything. That's don't give a fuck about that trade and move on with your life. Yeah. What? A thousand dollars? Wait, a thousand? Yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, for yeah. which book? I, well, I, well, I mean, I, he doesn't say, but oh yeah, I've seen trades that go for that or more. Yeah, Neil Gaiman. Is I am actually, very mad. Give me a single I am, example. Give I am very. Oh, no, no, I am very mad. Just, just recently, I found out um, the Flash book, the the, the Omnis. Yeah. I've been collecting. I bought number one. I bought number two. You know, I figure Ryan would understand, especially a, you know, a guy like me that wants to complete everything, to look out for in case anything goes out of print. So I'm oh. like, man, Ryan really hasn't like reordered the uh, the Flash Omnis in a long while. Typical I should look Higgins. them up. Typical Higgins. They're gone. Two hundred dollars on Amazon. First of all, two hundred dollars is nothing. Second of all, thousand uh, dollars. That's well. So not a, not specifically a comic book, but Neil Gaiman had a um, a big humble bundle up recently of all his uh, digital copies of all his books, uh, lots of stuff that are rare, out of print, hard to find. Renee knows. Um, Renee's got the answer. Look, the answer actually on. is oh, yeah, yeah. Don't give a fuck about you know, but comic books that much. A thousand dollars is crazy. He 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 was You're talking in Crazy Town. You were living in Crazy Town. He was talking about next door is Crazy Avenue. Neil Gaiman was talking about how one of his old books, a hardcover version of his Duran Duran uh, biography that he wrote years ago when he was uh, still um, a music journalist, uh, is now he, the recent copy sold for four thousand dollars. So, yes, That's a fucking outlier. That doesn't count. That does, and don't say it does because it does not. But there are many trades that go for lots and lots of money. That um, is true. So the problem is that the point is I'm saying don't give a fuck about those. Yeah, don't buy them. Move along. Buy digitally. Yeah. Th- buy this. Buying that 4K uh, Neil Gaiman bullshit is buy the single issues. IPOers. 
Buy the single and issues. Those guys <laughs> and fucking get on with your life. Yeah. Next question. Mitchell. Oh, my Mitch. Oh, Rock's oh, Buddy's Beast. Yeah. Yeah. Here, hey, here's a sample from every podcast from the Comic Conspiracy ever. Ryan Higgins. Next question from Mitch. Brock. Hey, Mitch. <laughs> What's up, Mitch? So Mitchell says, I just reread Sin of Killers from Preacher. Any other good Western comics out there? East of West. Charlie. East of West is a very good comic. I Western-ish. It's Western-ish. Um, it's fucking totally... Western-ish, it's fucking totally Six western. Gun. Six, Six Gun. Six Gun is very good. Um, Can't forget about Jonah Hex. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jonah Hex. Oh, yeah. Jonah Hex and then going into All-Star Western. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I, and I love all that stuff. It's Jonah Hex, stuff, most of it's out of print right now, right? Probably. Digital. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, digital. <laughs> Don't have much other choice. Yeah. I, I know I shouldn't yeah. hope for an omnibus, but I'll still hold out hope for someday for an omnibus. You'll, you'll just have to bind your own. Could, uh. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, every once in a while, they they will definitely put out some really good Western comics. Toby, if you're actually periscoping the back of this, you didn't post a link to it. Uh, I thought it's live, and then it goes dead. No, <laughs> 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 but you no, actually wait, have really? to, you actually have to like tweet out a thing to it. So I thought what? no, but like... I have pe- two people watching supposedly. I don't know how they found it. But yeah, I'm four people watching Hello. it supposedly well, at one point. You're Renee, because he's behind uh, you. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, Renee. All right. Look, now I have a third person just joined just by the height. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> just for seeing me. Yes. Since well, yeah, it's Emma Frost. It's just, we have ooh. a yeah, because uh, if you actually hit the little tweet button, they'll tweet out a link, and then I can retweet it. What tweet button? There's a button when you go to start it. There is like a human button that has the numbers three on it, and I got hearts coming out of it. Yeah, those are people that are liking. That's that's, that's for me. <laughs> ooh. Just saying. Well, let's 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 uh let's talk about Wes here. Wes says I'm a new DC reader. Ah. Oh. Uh, oh, he actually says something here, but I need to talk about this. this. is a news article I forgot about. He says, how do I deal with books being canceled? How do I switch to something else now that we're so far in? Um, betting early that something will be good or last is difficult, and I don't know how to shift over to a new one. By the way, I'm an adult with a job, so that, that's good to know. So just buy whatever the hell you want then at that point. Yeah, that's um, my, that, that is actually my solution, is grab your balls and decide what's important to you in life. Well, uh one thing he's talking about here is uh, Omega Men, which was canceled by DC at issue number seven. But I heard it was really good up until then. And then uncanceled. And now uncanceled. Oh, they are officially extending it to issue 12, so I cannot recommend Omega Men higher. It is not our great. It is not a great selling title, so I totally understand if you don't want to read it, but I highly what, recommend what, picking what, up that what? book. Why? You can understand because it's not a great selling title? I what? can understand that it's not. I mean, people aren't buying it. I understand. It's Omega Men. It's a weird title that very few people are yeah, going to check yeah, out. But you're, you're saying, you. what were the exact words you said? I can understand if you don't want to buy it because it's not selling well. I, I under- a paraphrased version. Sorry, I said. understand why you don't want to buy it. Comma. I, I understand it's not selling well. Comma. That's different than- uh, that is how I meant it. But you should read this book. Is it, it? Is, it is a good title. It is a different title than any DC book out there. And will probably be a phenomenally awesome trade at some uh, point. I'm and assuming... I've heard, I've heard from you that it's a fucking yeah, it's a great read. I, they had a 12-issue arc planned, so if it ends at 12, you get the complete story. Um, very great, cool layouts, cool art. It's very different. I mean, it's not a traditional superhero book in any, wait, in wait, any fashion. Wait, where did it earlier? It What's didn't it? go to 12? Well, it was going to be canceled at 7. And then, so and then DC after uh, people kind of there was a huge uproar on on well yeah all ten thousand people that bought it were pissed and <laughs> a large part of the reason of that is like there was some reports when it first started that the writer I think it was the writer was promised like twelve issues they, like it wasn't a they were basically like, all promised twelve issues yeah. and not all of them were getting it. <sighs> You know what you need to do? Here's your homework, is to get any sort of editor or person in charge of any comic book industry in here. To, well, you're think- promised 12 issues. We're true. You're promised 12 issues when you sign up to do issue number one, and then that promise goes away, right? I just want to understand, like, who's who's promising less than 12 issues? 12 issues to them is nothing. To DC, they promised some some creative team 12 issues. That is nothing to them. Why would you take that away? Why would you take that away? Ah, that sales. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. They man. were. I mean, I mean, the book. The book was not profitable by issue number three. Mm-hmm. That's the reality behind it, dude. But so many of these books are lost leaders, and they know it. I mean, think about how how not these Dead, days. How much was Deadpool a lost leader? For, uh, I guess it's a lost leader for Fox now. Not Awkward. Th- these days. Um, 
unfortunately, when books cost, you know, I mean, God, the average Marvel book is four ninety nine. Coming up with the new titles, like there are a number at three, but there's a number at five as well. The average book is four is four nine at at three ninety nine and five ninety nine. The average book is four ninety nine coming out. I mean, that may whittle down as we get over backup stories and stuff. But comics are expensive, very expensive, and. If See, they're not profitable, they don't last. I guess my mentality on something like that, and I get it. I get the fact that putting out the book in print was technically a loss for them, so they wanted to cancel it. But my solution for that is you go to the creative team and say, we can't afford to print the book anymore. Would you like to release it digitally? And just make it a digital only I don't know how release. much. I mean, so little of it is, so little of the cost is the printing, though. It's not that well, expensive. Printing, shipping, and all that. If the creative team is still willing to produce the book, knowing that if they did it with no pay, maybe they do it. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's just going to have to eat, eat a little bit into those Batman profits. Well, that, in theory, that's what it should be. It should be the entire company is a profitable yes or no. Yeah. Then do whatever you want to do. I mean, that's how it should be viewed. But unfortunately, they're viewed book to book in a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's the problem. Um, to answer Wes's question, though, uh, you every every run will end. Every book will end. Just jump on something else. If you like it, keep reading it. If you don't, drop it and get something else. You know, it's it's tough. I mean, but but that is literally what makes you a comic book fan or not is if you jump onto the next thing and you keep it going. You well, have to. Uh, I'll That's be perfectly honest about th- there's there's a lot of series I've jumped on because. I know they're selling strong. I know they're not going to leave me hanging at that point. And in a lot of cases, I actually applaud it when they have a planned out, like, this is going to be the final issue. It may be 30 issues from now, but they kind of have a, this is the story I'm going to tell. This is the amount of issues that it's going to take. And I know it's selling well enough that it's going to get there. Like, to me, that that makes it totally a safe, safe bet. Like, there were people coming in. Um, on Sunday when I was working here, we were talking about no player and how like non player, yeah, non player. player. Mm-hmm. Well, no player. But it doesn't come <laughs> oh. out often. <laughs> hey, oh. yeah. But um, and like to me, that's the overall frustration as a comic book collector is there are tons of stories in my collection that will never see a trade collection. Will never because they made it to like issue four and just stop coming out. Yeah. Well, so uh, Alex here on Twitter uh, kind of as a follow-up because he's talking with Wes, and he says I mean, I was, he's wondering the same thing about uh, some new titles like Howling Commandos and Black Knight. So Howling Commandos and Black Knight, 99% chance those books will not run longer than 12 issues. The odds are stacked against those books from the very beginning. It's possible that a character like Black Knight, boom, something clicks, and suddenly he's the new Hawkeye. Very unlikely. Then it goes to 18 issues instead of 12. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, 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 this type of stuff happens very infrequently. So um, if you like the character, if you like the book, buy it and don't worry about if it's going to get canceled. You just, it, that's just, you can't worry about that type of stuff. It, that is just the reality behind it. So. You, you have to learn to cut the, the single issue. If, if it's just not hitting. It, and if you don't like you, it, just stop. Well, yeah, if you don't like it, just stop buying it. Yeah. And if you love it, even though it's going to get canceled, buy those last couple of issues. Send the creator a message on Twitter and say, hey, man, I know this book's getting canceled, but I like it. I'm buying every issue. And, you know, you're not going to make a difference, but it, you just keep that rolling. You follow the creator. You follow whatever they're doing next. Positive you fo- vibes, man. You follow the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just like when you tell Higgins that you like Bryce briefly, <laughs> he keeps him going, however infrequently, even if uh, a lot of you guys don't like them. <clears throat> By the way, I love your talk, but I forgot until an hour later. I'm allergic to dogs. Oh, That's why I'm, I'm sorry. fucking rubbing oh. my eyes. <laughs> worst idea ever. <laughs> I'll put him away. No, 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 no. no. no it's, it's, the damage is done. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're almost done anyway, so it's fine. It's, it's all fine. good. It's I, just, fine. I, I feel bad. I'm like, rubbing my eyes. Uh, I'm not that emotional still. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? Anyway, sorry, sorry. Do we have any more Twitter questions now that I'm like crying uh, involuntarily? We got a couple here. We got one from uh, Hiram who says, thanks for the podcast. It's Hiram. 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 It's just insensitive. I just can't pronounce any names. Uh, he says, thanks 
to the podcast, I've started collecting comics. I demand an apology from everyone. What? I apologize to everybody. I'm sorry. You'll get like, an sorry. apology from everyone but me, Hiram. <laughs> Marvel comics are incredible. Well. And yeah. you're welcome. Br- Bryce. Yeah. The first round of comics I bought was the Secret Wars stuff. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. You're fucking welcome, Hiram. Yeah. But. Except for those X-Men titles. He passed. Yeah, those, L, those X-Men titles are bad. But Oof. he passed on the Gwenpool variant cover that's now like a $100 book. Because that's, that that's our first appearance. That is mind-blowing that that, like, it's not, okay, I take it back. It's not mind-blowing at all. It's just like, that's one of those, what I said earlier, you got to grab your balls and realize what's important in life. That is and, Gw- and Gwenpool's fail. important. No, that's not important. That is like a, how the fuck did that even become popular? Uh, grab your balls, fail moment. Well, um, his question is, has anyone passed on anything you found out later was valuable? Oh, dude. Yeah. I yeah. was like one of the ten people in the state of California that liked New Mutants when it was coming out, <laughs> issue number 98, and uh, I have my uh, my one issue, and that's it. It's a popular run. That was actually a pretty popular run. I but think, I think a lot of people uh, passed on something. It doesn't sound like you passed on it, though. The question is... No, I passed on not getting 17 copies that were yeah. available at the time that are now, like, could have paid for my kid's college. I don't think that's the point of the question. So the question, you know, the question is like, oh. so I read every issue of Peter Pan's Faust, and I thought it was a fantastic series, and then Bro- and I read them all and put them back on the shelf, and Brock's like, I sold my copy for $500. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fuck. Fucking Brock, though, he probably didn't uh, didn't pay for his copy and came in and got it for no? uh, But uh, no, Brock bought it off the wall, too. But yeah, but like, you know, in the case of Walking Dead, I was one of the two people that bought it off the shelf here when yeah. it was out, because I was like, this is amazing. And I, I had them all through, I kept them through issue 100. So yeah, you know, you win some, you lose some for me yeah. it's ultimate spider-man I, oh. I i remember i have it i have number one yeah. but i really wanted to buy multiples and <laughs> I, I really told myself i should really grow up and really just buy one issues from now on don't don't do this multiple crap again and of course that's the one book that actually was worthwhile for a while not now but for a while it and, was and then you uh and then you did it again when all star batman yeah then out. i bought yeah there was like copies. yeah all all uh, logical thinking went out the window of course that was not the book to <laughs> oh, do it was, on uh, so i did that with guardians Abbott and Lanning series. Man, that was a nice 250 bucks. Yeah. So for me, what it came down to is this. As a kid, I had my comic books. I read my comic books to death. And then I went into a comic shop, was looking at the wall, and saw something on the wall that I had read to death and realized I cannot buy comic books to try and sell. I no. just... No. It, it's, it's too heartbreaking when you realize... That comic that I have and read fifty times is now falling apart. Is now worth this amount of money? Like, well, Charlie, just, do you understand me buying ten uh, ten copies of All Stars Batman now? Not really, probably. No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I think I think what it boils down to is is you can't sit there and go, oh, if I had only bought that. You kind of have to just appreciate when you do get no. something. And like you said, Peter Pranzerfest, I bought it. I was reading it. I enjoyed it, and then. You know, I was like, no. I don't need these, and I sold them, and I made some money off of it. No, you know? the, the only time collectability and price drive me insane is when every once in a while some really god awful book or something will suddenly skyrocket up, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah, X Force yeah. number three on Ryan's wall. <laughs> no, no, Two. no, 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 no. The best one that was put up today, Booster Gold oh, number one. Yeah. Yeah, so Booster Gold number one now is like a three hundred dollar book. What? Yeah, CGC to like nine point eight. Like high high grade Booster Gold number ones are going for a fortune. It's down ooh, there. Ooh, crazy! I, I do have one. Walking Dead on one. I read it. I thought, oh, it was, yeah. there's nothing that's going to happen out of it. It's somewhere in my boxes. I don't even know if it's bag and boarded. It might just be in some some box. Like you're going to find books. that. You're going to find that book. Yeah. All right, got uh, one here from uh, Y. Asks uh, in Gotham, and this is actually from this last episode. Uh, Thomas Wayne left the letter for Bruce. Aside from Flashpoint, has this happened in the comics before? I don't. I mean, not that I, not that I can remember. He does it in Flashpoint. He does. He gives him. He gives him the letter to, to to give to the other Bruce. But I don't think so. I mean, it's possible, but it's not like a it's not like a normal piece of the Batman canon. Well, I can't remember any time he's found oh, something God. like addressed to him from his father. But the, he has found. Like diary entries and, and yeah, that kind and of stuff. stuff. Like, yeah. like they've they've done, but not like a specific letter to him right, that right, I can right, recall. Right. Yeah, not that I know of. 
All right, I got one last question here. This is from Rickle. Rickle? And Rickle. Yeah. Welcome, Rickle. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's internet names. I have no idea what people's real names are. He asks, favorite pizza toppings. Let's go. Brock, favorite pizza topping. Now? Favorite pizza topping. Mushrooms. Bryce, oh, favorite pizza topping. Sausage and olive. I could eat until the apocalypse. Or apocalypse being the best villain R- ever. Renee. Oh. Renee. Favorite pizza Pineapple. topping. Pineapple. Uh, Toby. Wait, just one? Well, I- I'm telling you my pizza. Bell pepper, onion, tomatoes, and cheese. Jesus. Tomatoes and cheese are no, usually... Like, you don't understand. Yeah. More cheese. <laughs> you like, like a full tomato? Are you like full tomato? or I, like... I like the full tomatoes okay. and the okay. tomato sauce. I want everything. Okay. He's not saying sliced tomatoes. He no. wants that round. Just, a, just a full tomato on, oh, yeah, tomato on top on of it. Top. <laughs> you just bite into it and it explodes. So That's... recently my semi-pizza obsession, not really obsession, but I'm going to go there, is I tried a just a cheese pizza, but with like pesto sauce instead Ooh, of the... Uh, yeah, and, like, I, I like I pesto like sauce sometimes, yeah. 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 Like, I, I I kind of am digging that as my pizza right now. It's just... Like Teen Titans, you're spicing it up? Yeah. yeah. My classic is uh, Hawaiian, pineapple and ham. Love it. Um, my more recent favorite is actually from a place across the street here, Jake's, do we get our pizza now? Uh, they do a, um, what is like a barbecue chicken? Uh, it's barbecue sauce, chicken, and, um, uh, like caramelized onions. Or no, it's, 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 it's not caramelized like onions. Raw onions. No, it's like raw onions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a fucking wolf. It's Everything good. about what you just said is onion. delicious except for the raw onions. Oh, I love it. Caramelize good. that shit and you will have me not picking it off and putting it in your pizza box. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Of course, now I want to try them caramelized. Yeah, that'd be oh, good they'd too. be so much more delicious. By the way, when you cook food, it breaks down the complex proteins and makes them more easily digestible. Okay. You know my favorite pizza I just had recently? It was at San Diego Comic Con. It was called Studio Pizza. And it was like, uh, make your own pizza, like mod pizza and all these new places that are popping up. But man, they had like five different choices in just uh, the, the, the dough itself. It had like spicy it dough. We, mm. it, was, it was so good. And it had a bunch of spicy stuff that you put on. Oh, it was so good. Dude. I never got to do my San Diego Comic Con talk. Dude, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm surprised. Do you not? Be- no. Next next podcast, if yes. you want to talk about Comic-Con. I'm wow, t- that's like two months ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you don't like Pizza Hut with their stuffed cheese crust pizzas. I, you know, I see that commercial all the time. I really want to try it. <laughs> I really haven't gone along to talking it. talking about it. I'm getting fatter to listen yeah, to this. I know. Look, look at my belly, man. Look, look, um, jiggle, jiggle. So, uh, There's an X-Men arcade at the Pizza Hut that I go to. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, it's been there since I was younger. Maybe a lot younger, but it's still there as far as I know. Mm. The, uh, Can we the wrap X-Men? up now? We are <laughs> wrapping up now. No, it's the, uh, it's the X-Men, the, the Street Fighter one. It's Welcome amazing. to die. Psylocke is in there. It's yes. so good. So good. Jim Lee style. Yeah. Dude, that fucking X-Men arcade you're talking about? Yeah. Well, no, it's like the fighting one, though. Do you know that one? The X Men, well, Children of the Atom, I think. Oh, tech, oh like, dude, it's like it. Jim no, Lee art style. That's different. It's like that's Street Fighter, but X Men. No, that's not what he's talking about. Yeah, the fighting one. No, that's different than the Jim Lee one that he's talking about. Unless there's two Jim Lee ones. No, oh, the, well, I'm th- the casing that the I saw. The Capcom one. Yeah, the Capcom one has the casing had tons of Jim Lee. Art on Will board. any one of you other fuckers dive in here? I don't know. It's there's a pizza. Okay, Jim okay. One, it's not a I'll tell you. And we're wrapping up. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> what? All our previous episodes no! of the podcast are available. At geekbox.net. the worst, and Renee, you're the worst. And I'm Comics Conspiracy Dub is. <laughs> uh, go there. Digital.comicsconspiracy.up is where you can buy all the digital comics stuff. I forget about that. Forums at geekbox.net and the Geekbox and Facebook group. Uh, can Box- I mention that Bryce was drinking beer and coffee this podcast? Oh, you gotta even me out, baby. That's incredible. I should try that one of these days. The it Geekbox. Did, did Higgins just turn me off? I did, of course I did. The Geekbox oh. and Comic Conspiracy Facebook. Don't forget about that. Digital. Oh, I already did digital. Comic Conspiracy. Patreon.com slash Comic Conspiracy. That is where you can go to donate some money for us uh, to continue doing stuff on the podcast, <laughs> uh, which we love doing. Uh, Spiritofbrock.com. That is Brock's blog. Uh, video blog and podcast, uh, uh, video blog and pull list. The Infinite Long Blast podcast and Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension podcast. Those are Charlie's other podcast. Doctor Who back on. They got some new episodes talking about the Charlie new shows. Very smart about asking me to get on that podcast. Listen to like, that. Like two minutes before recording, they're like, "Do you want to be on?" Don't forget 
We're all on Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins, Ryan Brock, Brock Sager, Bryce is Larson Bryce, Toby is Toby XI, Charlie is Insanity and Chaos. We got the Geekbox comedy button. Good job, Brian. I'll talk podcast. Don't forget to listen to those. Renee, Renee. thank you so much. And your, your mic is still on, so you can continue talking. Uh, Renee, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming out here and dealing with this, our, our very untraditional night of recording. So. Thank you for having me. I really wasn't expecting to wind up on the podcast, actually. <laughs> well, I hope you had a fun time. I and uh, Thank you. I definitely want to hear more about your trip when you when you okay. reach the destination. So, uh, and, and good luck on the rest of your trip. Be safe. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, keep in touch. And, and uh, do, do you want to plug something? I, you're going to be I, in yeah. Vancouver looking for work, probably? Uh, yeah, in a, in a while. Okay. Um, what kind of work you do? You talk about that? Um, I've been working in a video game company. Okay. I've been doing a lot of different jobs uh, okay. there. But. Well, if anyone works in games industry in Vancouver and is looking or for – or, or knows people and is maybe looking for someone uh, that's willing to drive across the country to work for you, you go. contact us and I'll contact Renee and I'll pass on the info because let's get this guy a good job. When okay. You, okay. Thank Vancouver, you very much. You will love Vancouver. Vancouver is beautiful. It is. I, I hope so. Renee, yes. Really You're not, your mic's not on. Just, just ah. everyone's off. Renee talking. is a, is a, is a <laughs> handsome, hardworking gentleman, so you should uh, I- investigate the possibility of working with him. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Is his mic on? His mic is on. Yes, yes, yes. All right. We're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, Renee, once again, thank you for being on. and uh, Thank you for having me. Good night.